Look out, the dog. All right, guys. It is a lovely frog-filled night here at Bugs in a Jar. The lightning bugs beginning to come on for the summer of 2023 here on Monday, June 19th, uh, 2023. And uh, I uh, mentioned this uh, at the... Uh, end of my rant last night and I just uh, was reading uh, the latest post my my buddy Michael Campy on medium.com uh, I mentioned this last night that I am watching this uh, docu series on Netflix called I think Chimpanzee Empire about uh, these troops of chimpanzees living over in the Ngogo forest of Uganda. And, you know, as I said last night, and I've really been thinking about it, Michael uh, brought this kind of, kind of brought up something similar in his essay. Uh, is, 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 you know, the reason, uh, I don't watch many of these nature documentaries of, you know, beautiful, unspoiled, uh, landscapes, uh, you, you know, with, with no humans anywhere, not just no humans, just, you know, ignoring the fact of the cameraman taking the video, you know what I'm saying, you just forget about that human and all of these beautiful, unspoiled paradises without humans. Uh, I, in, in some weird way, I find these nature documentaries about untouched, unspoiled natural paradises, I find them, weirdly enough, even more depressing than, you know, than, than straight on triple X rated doomer porn. You, you, you know, with the Amazon rainforest in flames or, uh, you know, something about overfishing or, or the Arctic melting or. Uh, it, it, wildfires burning up koala bears or you know if it's this flat out doomer porn it's already paradise lost it's just it's just chronicling the collapse of a planet but these the, these beautiful little uh you know, and, and I can't believe they st can still find them. You know, David Attenborough uh, talks about how it's get, getting virtually impossible to find anywhere to, to go film these things anymore that haven't been trashed by humans. But, uh, you know, to see what this planet is supposed to look like, and by supposed to look like, meaning what a planet looks like without humans in it, you know, not counting the, the cameraman uh, who you don't see, it just makes it, for some reason, I, I, I just find these documentaries just, just unbearably depressing because it really, you know, brings home, it puts under the microscope what it is that that humans are uh, are, are are doing, and I, I don't even know if I have the stomach to watch uh, the rest of this series. So I don't know if at the very last fifteen minutes of the last episode are are they going to talk about the reality of the situation, and uh, which is I. So I looked this up, the Ngogo Forest, uh, and started looking up at threats to the environment, to the environment, and to the chimpanzees 
in the Ngogo Forest in Uganda. And the, the first thing that comes up is talking about there has been a seven-fold increase, a seven-fold increase in the number of humans living in the buffer zone around the park. I can't remember what, I think over the last 50 years, that the number of humans pressing in uh, onto the last stronghold of these chimpanzees uh, in, in Uganda has increased sevenfold. And these humans obviously are, uh, are, are getting in a resource war uh, with the chimpanzees, you know, in the, I've only watched two parts of this, you know, they're talking about how the chimpanzees, you know, humans' closest relatives, uh, you know, are in these never-ending resource wars. Uh, so they film all of these little chimpanzee wars over resources, in this case mostly fruit trees, without ever mentioning the, the resource war of these planet nibblers nibbling away at the edges of this, quote, protected area. And uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the, the only thing standing uh, between the chimpanzee empire and the stew pot uh, is the Ugandan government. And, uh, you know, I, I just don't know if I have the stomach to watch the rest of this. So, anyway, so, uh, Michael Campion is medium.com. He was actually quoting a, um, well, it would have helped if I had had this called up. Michael was was actually uh, was actually quoting someone else. Uh, so Michael's uh, <clears throat> Michael's story today is called "I Hate to Call It." survival, but in the middle of uh, his, he quotes at length from uh, this other fellow who really, uh, Cody Pedersen, who spent five years trying to restore the forest on his property, said in his article, we can't save it quote, at the crescendo of sobbing and loss, the saddest thought I've ever had came to me. I wish I didn't know. What else can you say when faced with a catastrophe of such vastness, with the unraveling of the entire fabric of life on earth, I mean, we need to fight to save what we can, but the web of life as we know it is done. All the beautiful things we saw as kids on the Discovery Channel are now seeing on Netflix. The forest I grew up in, the mountain lions, the horned owls, and the scat and the tracks and the washes, we're so early in this curve, and the changes that are already baked in will be so profound. I don't think humans are headed for extinction. We will survive, though many of us will suffer and many die. But all this life with which we have shared the planet, much of it won't make it. I wish I didn't know. I wish I didn't know those ancient trees dying up there on the mountain. I wish I'd never hiked through 
Quayamaca before the fires. Wish I'd never looked beneath rocks for lizards in the canyons before the bulldozers came. Or heard the frogs singing. Or heard the frogs singing. Some of us have seen what's coming us what's coming. Some of us feel deeply the oneness of all life, feel its fabric fraying. On the first of April twenty nineteen, just after three o'clock, some faith, some fantasy inside me died and I felt despair for the world I've known and loved. We will not save what was the world, the systems, the interrelationships, the densely woven tapestry, the totality we were raised to love will collapse. Yep, and, uh, well, my, uh, my, uh, comment was, uh, what was pretty much, uh, what I just said at the opening, uh, of this, my comment to Michael was, this is the reason I would rather watch straight doomer porn of the Amazon burning than one of these warm and fuzzy nature documentaries like Chimpanzee Empire, knowing that those chimps and their empire are doomed to the chainsaw and the stew pot as the human population surrounding their little slice of forest has increased sevenfold over the last 50 years and the Ugandan government is the only thing standing between them and the zombie hordes of clueless moron breeders. But, but, but these folks have nothing to do with global warming. Shut the fuck up. I'm, I'm so fucking, excuse the uh, F words, I, I'm just so sick of this crap. These people in Uganda whose population has increased sevenfold have nothing to do with global warming. I, I am so tired of it. Global warming is not going to put these chimpanzees in the stew pot. Anyway, the choice is humans go now and give everyone else a chance, or humans go later taking down every one of our fellow earthlings on our way out the door. We all know how this no-brainer is gonna play out. Well, I still got my frog song. In the summer of 2023, what do you think, little dog? We still get to go to sleep to frog song. How much longer will we be able to go to sleep to the sound of frog song in our ears? And you know, with this damn amphibian disease, whatever they call that, chirid or whatever. Uh, anyway, get out there and enjoy your frog song. 
while you still can. Bye, guys.